that there are no policy differences between the EFF and the ANC. So talk to us about if there were to be a coalition between these two parties, what, what would it look like? Well, uh, it will be a, a coalition that is based on uh, expropriation of land without compensation, uh, nationalization of mines and banks, the creation of jobs, and uh, the stopping of load shedding. So we are strong believers that uh, the government must be at the center of development uh, in South Africa if we are to succeed. But it's very unlikely that the ANC would meet some of those demands. So wh what exactly is a deal breaker here? Um, and what are you willing to maybe negotiate on? Well, the ANC had agreed with us in 2021 when we were talking coalitions uh, of local government. Mm -hmm. And um, the spoilers came through and disrupted that agreement. But you will know that in 2017, the ANC went to take resolutions uh, on these matters. The ANC has got a resolution on expropriation of land, on nationalization of the Reserve Bank, and all manner of things. So uh, that's why I say from a policy perspective, it shouldn't be difficult for the EFF and the ANC and MK and ATM and PAC uh, and UDM to find each other uh, so that we can make progress on BFO for So then what, what's the likelihood then, uh, based on your current polling, wh what, are, what should we be expecting come May 29th uh, in terms of coalition parties? Well, you, you must expect coalitions. I wouldn't say which parties because there hasn't been a talk to that extent. There is um, a very clear, uh, uncontested, uh, you know, uh, thing that no one is going to pass 50 percent. You don't think the ANC will? No, they, they will not. Even they themselves don't believe they will pass uh, 50 percent. So uh, they should be preparing themselves uh, to co-govern with other political parties. Otherwise, they're going to find themselves in the cold. Is, do things get done, though, in a coalition government here in South Africa? Because I've heard from different politicians that nothing will get done just because of the gulf between some of these parties in terms of their policies. The uh, coalition policies work everywhere, um, including here in South Africa, they will work. The problem is that the ANC is used to so much power, mm. so much that when it is in a coalition, it gets frustrated because it does as it wishes. But under coalition, they will not be able to do so. They have to swallow their pride and put aside their but ego. But what does that actually look like? Development. What does that look like, but practically, right? Yeah. Because, you know, you say swallow your pride, but what does that mean for a party that's been in power now for, for so long? It means you no longer have power. That's the first thing you need to admit. Does that mean but people move then? People move out of certain roles? President Cyril Ramaphosa Absolutely. Ramaphosa can be removed from his role. Uh, other ministers of the ANC, obviously, they will no longer occupy all cabinet because they no longer have the absolute majority. They are going to have to give way for those people who are uh, accommodating them to be part of the governing. Are there certain party? cabinet positions that the EFF would want as a, as a deal breaker if, there, if you were to get into it? Well, if we go into a coalition, obviously we want to be in the presidency, and if that is no, we want the finance department. Mm. Because we're not going to participate in a coalition where we are meaningless, who can't make any contribution to immediately change the lives of our people. And why Floyd Shivambu? Because you said he should be the finance minister if this were Well, to Floyd Shivambu is the best uh, economist this country has produced. He knows and understands the South African economy. He knows that South Africa has got $3 trillion, uh, debt, which is servicing. And out of that $3 trillion debt, uh, 28 billion is an apartheid debt. So you minus 28 billion from the 3 trillion, you save a lot of money because we must argue internationally that we cannot pay for a debt that was meant to kill us. So, uh, and he will prioritize uh, our people. It will not be uh, just emphatic on uh, uh, austerity measures and uh, a fiscal policy that is only uh, interested in the markets and neglect the fundamental uh, demands of our people where we need to meet the most basic needs of the downtrodden. Are you suggesting the fiscal policies right now are catering then to the market and not to the country? If they were catering the country, South Africa will not be the most unequal society in the world. The number one unequal society in the world 
It can be that our fiscal policy prioritizes the poor when uh, poverty levels in South Africa have increased and joblessness in South Africa has increased. In one province of Eastern Cape, half of the population is unemployed. So everything we are told when we say, please channel the resources this way, let's do this. No, the market are not going to accept what you are trying to do. But there's some concern among investors when, when they hear about, especially nationalization of something like the central bank, how that actually gets the country into growth and into development and, and achieving some of these goals that you're talking about. I mean, how, how, do you, how do you see this actually benefiting the country? Well, it guarantees our sovereignty. Uh, these investors you are talking about, you will find them in many other countries. South Africa is one of the few countries in the world whose uh, reserve bank is privately yeah. owned. Mm -hmm. So these investors that are going to be worried about us safeguarding our sovereignty have themselves invested in other countries where the reserve banks are uh, owned by the state. So it will be inconsistency and an unacceptable thing to say, no, South Africa must not do it, and uh, whereas you allow other people to do it and you still invest in those in those countries. How would it work then if you were to actually nationalize the Reserve Bank? It will be, the, the governor will be uh, appointed by the state and the members of the Reserve Bank board are going to be uh, appointed by, by the state and it will ensure that its sovereignty, it is based on the interest of the South African people. What, what are those interests, though? And, and let's just talk about the private shareholders who, at this point, as you yes. mentioned, uh, are currently uh, you know, uh, holding shares in, in the Reserve Bank. I mean, what would happen with these entities then? No, the private shareholders must be gradually uh, brought, bought out of uh, uh, the Reserve Bank. And um, we cannot allow a situation where we say no at all cost, these uh, uh, private investors must stay because uh, what about their uh, investments? Uh, we are not a, an anarchist organization. We are a progressive organization that is going to gradually ensure that strategic sectors of the economy are state-owned. And it doesn't mean private sector can't play a role. It will play a role in other sectors of the economy, not on strategic sectors. What if that then puts in jeopardy the RAND and the strength of the economy here in foreign direct investment? I mean, would you then maybe take a step back from, from this position? No, 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 we can't do that. Of course, there's going to be a bit of a setback. There's going to be a, an attack uh, on our policy. But the world is now evolving and changing into a different kind of world. Uh, there is a huge debate now to de-dollarize uh, the economy of the African continent. And uh, there are other markets outside the dollar that will be prepared uh, to invest and boost uh, our economy and will use our mineral resources as well to boost uh, our currency. So what kind of setback then are, are you anticipating if, if you are to nationalize something like the Reserve Bank? No, a setback is going to be that we're disinvesting in a way of trying to intimidate us. Mm. It will not be uh, uh, for the first time where uh, the, the capitalists want to impose themselves on people through uh, disinvestment. The only thing is, do you have alternative markets when they disinvest on this or that sector? Will these alternative markets come in? And then China is more than willing to come in. Um, uh, uh, Russia is more than willing to come in and we're able to close that gap and we must equally start trading in a very big way with the African continent because sometimes we don't invest from amongst ourselves. We rely, we over rely uh, on America and the West whereas if we're to do business amongst ourselves uh, we'll be uh, better off. So uh, it shouldn't be that when that threat comes, we should be shaken. We should know it's going to come, and we should anticipate that when they come, these are alternative markets that are lined up hmm. to come and intervene. But couldn't it potentially put relationships like that of the EU, which is a major trading partner for South Africa, in jeopardy if the country aligns even closer to Russia or to China? Well, uh, it's our self-determination. We cannot be uh, told by EU 
who our friends should be and who our trading partners should be. If anything, uh, the colonizers and the imperialist forces are not our ally, and we make no secret about that. I so, mean, they're the biggest trading partner. Uh, for that, the, because the other markets are closed out. The biggest trading partners who can help us build power stations, if anything, they say, destroy your power stations. And because we are their trade partners, we are unable to go beyond them and ask other people who can come help us to make our country a better place. So what would then be, you've talked about everyone is, is a friend if they are working in the national interests of South Africa, correct? Yeah. What, what are those national interests? What would be priorities? We need to safeguard the sovereignty of the African, South African uh, state and make sure that its interests are first more than any other country. So for instance, if you are mm -hmm. to engage in a trade partnership, you always have to ensure that the peop that trade agreement is beneficial and it is in the best interest of South Africa, not because the EU or Britain or America uh, feels you need to go this direction or else we will withdraw certain benefits that are there for South Africa. So that's what we're talking about, not people who are going to be saving the interest of our colonizer, the interest of the imperialists. Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, is set to make a visit to South Africa. I mean, considering what you're saying about Russia, does that, but does your foreign policy stance potentially put that relationship in jeopardy? Would you meet with him? And I wonder what you would say then. No, 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 I can't meet with him. Why? I've got no business meeting with him because he's engaged in a struggle to get people killed out of nothing. He's saving the agenda of the NATO forces and wanting the NATO to engage in a illegal territorial expansion and undermine the sovereignty of the Russian people. And the Russian people are saying we've got a right to defend ourselves. So I would not meet with a person who serves the interest of other people other than the interest of his own people in his own country. Julius, in the ad board, you were saying that there's been a lot of fear mongering that's going on. I mean, considering what you're saying and considering the jitters among investors, it, it, is it justified? I mean, considering, you know, you could potentially destabilize a lot of the relationships that South Africa has had intact. It's a foreign policy of the EFF government, mm -hmm. and um, it should not be uh, uh, scaremongering because uh, whoever now comes to relate with us mm -hmm. will now know where we stand on this or that issue. It doesn't make Zelensky uh, an enemy of uh, the EFF, all we're saying is mm. he has to make a clear pronunciation is not joining NATO because the joining of NATO allows NATO to undermine the sovereignty of the Russian people. And we know who NATO is. Uh, NATO, America, you can't separate them. So that's all we say. Uh, 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 the same thing with Palestine and Israel. We're not uh, anti-Jewish uh, uh, people. We are anti-apartheid Israel, which is committing genocide uh, in Palestine. But if they stop what they are doing in Palestine and genuine talks take place where the two-state theory can be canvassed and be implemented, we are more than willing to participate in that kind of discourse to try and find a solution uh, in the Middle East. So our support for uh, Palestine does not necessarily suggest uh, we are anti-Semitists. Mm. Uh, and, and Julius, before I let you go, because I realize I've gone oh. over, uh, <laughs> I wanted to uh, ask you about your former boss, uh, Jacob Zuma, former yeah. president of South Africa. Yeah. Um, his MK party is, is doing better than I think a lot of people expected. Are you anticipating the MK party to take some of the success away from the EFF, as some polls are suggesting they're doing with the ANC? Well, um, at the center of the formation of the EFF, it was our battle with Jacob Zuma. So there is no person who would have said, no, I'm joining EFF, yet uh, I support Jacob Zuma at, the, at, the, at that time. So our base has never been based on the basis of the love and support uh, for Jacob Zuma. So why would uh, something that was not based on his love and support be threatened uh, by him? We are a national organization. We have had successful rallies in all uh, provinces 
and we are the only organization uh, after the ANC that has got membership and presence in almost all municipalities in South Africa and exist in every corner of South Africa. We welcome President Zuma to the terrain. Uh, let him come, uh, but he knows himself by now that it's not easy to form a political party. It might be nice there uh, to make noise and uh, pull the numbers, but the actual work is still to begin, and we welcome him. Uh, in the ANC, it was not him who formed the ANC. He found the infrastructure there, and the infrastructure always knew how a leader uh, should be supported. So it doesn't present a threat to the EFF support? Not at all. We were in KZN um, in now uh, recently. Um, after President Zuma announced MK Party in December, we went to KZN after December, had a successful rally in KZN where it is the base of MK, mm -hmm. and that did not affect us. But uh, from policy perspective, ourselves and President Zuma are not very far. Um, and it's one of the parties that uh, after the elections uh, it will be interesting to engage with. Right. Julius Malema, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your Thank time. You. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you.